Hi, my name is Gerhard Schwartner, and welcome to the Sales Up Shop. I'm Anthony Anarino. How are you, Gerhard? Today we have a fantastic show for you. We'll talk about success in sales. And as you all know, in order to be successful in sales, we need two things. We need the right mindset and we need the right skill set. In order to do that, Anthony and I will talk about Brian Tracy. We'll watch a clip, analyze that. Then we watch something you probably have never seen before, a live sales call by Grant Cardone. And Anthony and I will extract the skills lessons we've learned from that clip. And then we move on and have a live chat with Grant Cardone. Stay tuned. Let's start with a clip with Brian Tracy. About five years ago, I met a wise and wealthy man who had spent his entire life studying success. And he'd reached a clear conclusion concerning the reason for success in life and especially in business. He's dead now, but I'll never forget what he told me because I immediately recognized that he put the finger on my reason for success and yours, as we'll talk about in a minute. He said the key to success was to set a goal and then to stay with it until you achieve success in at least one important thing. He said that your subconscious mind will then accept that success experience and store it as a pattern, like a template. And then you're, from then on, your subconscious will drive you and direct you and guide you to repeat the pattern of success in, in other things that you attempt. Another way of saying it is that nothing succeeds like success. So, Anthony, what do you think about um, his definition of success where he seems to define it in terms of that this is really an unconscious drive. I don't. I don't know that it's it's unconscious or subconscious. I do think that we have two parts of us. We have our conscious mind and our subconscious mind. I do think though that when they're aligned, we tend to do better. And what I, I think happens to successful people that I've looked at is that they get those two things aligned by succeeding, by having some success, and then gaining in confidence. And it seems that the more they succeed and the more confident they get the easier it is to move from success to success, uh, build from strength to strength. But I do think that if there's any shred of doubt, if you're not 100% confident in what you're doing, and if you don't believe it, if you don't believe you're worthy of success, if you don't believe you can create enough value to get the success, that will be a drag on whatever your goal is and whatever your mission is, and it will prevent you from reaching as high as you might be able to reach if you really, really believe, and if you really have that confidence. Well, I think that there are two things operating. One is the success philosophy that we create uh, over a lifetime. And the other one is how we are guided and interrupted by fantasy. And I think if you have not consciously defined a philosophy of success, you're really unconsciously operating on a philosophy of failure. I agree with you. I call it a personal psychology. And I think probably the greatest struggle for most people in reaching their goals is a poor personal psychology. If they don't have a belief structure that's built on empowering beliefs that allow them to take action and believe that they can succeed, if it's built on disempowering beliefs that there's scarcity, that there's no chance, if it's built on fear, then people can't very easily succeed whatever they choose to do. So let's watch another clip by Grant Cardone. And he is a master sales trainer. Uh, watch how he helps salespeople persuade a client. This is the sales department, okay? I'm gonna blow in on the sales department and show them how to sell something. That's gonna increase morale, it's gonna drive revenue, and it's gonna make the business successful. That's what people all over the world are not doing. Sales meeting every day for two years. This is a guy on a phone call right now. He's having trouble. Okay. I'm going to intervene. I'm going to drop in, not discuss okay. half. I'm going to drop in. Okay, so why don't, why don't I do this? I'll give you a call at the end of the month, and then we can see where we're at and see if things change. Let me have that call. Oh, wow. Really? This is Carlos. Hey, Carlos. Hey, your business is here. Grant Cardone here. How you doing? Yes, this is. This is Grant Cardone, sir. Hey. You know what? You're talking to me right now. Hey, and and the reason I'm jumping on this call, Carlos, is because I heard Jared say something about he's going to call you back next month. There's literally 300 videos. Yeah, I take time to look at this thing, man. I want to finish up my month. Okay, but let me ask you something. Why did you look at it in the first place? Well, I have an interest in training, man. I have an interest in getting my people. 
people trained. And why do you why do you have an interest in getting your people trained? Well, obviously, the better trainer they are, the more revenue it is, the less expensive. Okay, so what's important to you? What problem are you trying to solve? That we're going to include a ticket for. Well, you know, I want to I want to get them to be able to handle all the situations that they encounter. Man, I want to get my green teas better trained. I want to get my veterans excited again. You know, I'm trying to survive like anybody. Man, I'm trying to expand. Good. And, and, and Carlos, excuse me, but do you feel like you're missing opportunities right now? Yes. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, we all did. Good. So you didn't call Jared. You didn't show interest in our product because you wanted to save money. You you called Jared because you want to increase your income by your revenue, by ha having your people better handle situations, get your veterans experience, and get your green, your newer salespeople trained. Can you hear him? Yeah, but I just don't want to spend month on your product is what he's asking too. I mean, can't you guys yeah. do better than that? Fifteen hundred a month is pretty high, man. Well, the fifteen hundred a month, th okay. that's your objection? Is the cost? See, he's moved already. Well, that's one yeah. of the objections. Sure. You know, okay. Fifteen hundred a month. I just kind of wrap my arms around that. Yeah. Well, let me let me explain to you that it's not fifteen hundred a month. It's thirty six thousand dollars. Is that yourself? Plus the four thousand dollar startup fee, which means it's forty thousand. I need you to think about a forty thousand dollar decision, not a fifteen hundred dollar a month decision. Okay, you're going to be on this program two years, not one month. If you're not going to be on it two years, you need to tell me that up front because then we don't need to do it. It won't work anyway. Let me ask you a question, okay. Carlos. I will. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. As as he's When's the last program. time your company spent forty thousand okay. dollars? Thank you. We probably spend uh, spend almost that a month on advertising. Uh huh. Have you ever had it not work? Well, you can't ever really put a finger on it, but I'm sure you know it's working somehow. We want to keep spending the money. Right. So look, you're going to spend forty thousand dollars to train your people over two years. Over two years to handle every opportunity that comes to you, and you spend four hundred and eighty thousand dollars in the same period of time on advertising. This represents basically. 8% of your ad budget. Do you want to train your people? Do you want them motivated? If so, if you're going to do this sooner or later, if you're going to do this sooner or later, I'm, I'm going to suggest, and that's why I'm getting on the call, take time out of the equation and let's do this. The reason I got on the call was to assure you that I'm here to support you and help you. Look, Carlos, no, tell, if, if, tell, if, tell, if, him, tell him to fax me a contract. Jesus Christ. Carlos, I appreciate your business. Thank you, buddy. What are your first impressions? Uh, let's analyze that sales pitch and uh, let's divide it into two parts. One is the relationship building and the other one is the, the selling skills. Okay, so the first thing is uh, Grant Cardone is extraordinarily confident. He's extraordinarily confident. He's a Louisiana boy. He's a hustler. There's no doubt about it. He's a hustler in the first right. There's no question. He would be successful at whatever he did. That carries so much weight on a call like that. From the relationship building, he's calling, I'm, I'm sure it's an auto dealership because that's his space and they're well aware of him and his reputation. So getting him on the phone has some star power and there's some flaw because it is Grant on the phone. So immediately he's got a level of rapport that uh, Jordan or Jared, whatever his sales rep's name, probably can't accomplish by himself. Grant's able to do that because he's Grant and uh, translating that skill to a rep is difficult, but it's easy for him because he had that going into it. What do you think about that? I think he has star power. He has the, the handsome, good looks uh, of a movie star. He has acted in a television show. So he has that uh, charisma that very few people have, and that's very difficult to duplicate. Um, secondly, um, he is very quick. He has the situational fluency that is so important with uh, with people where he immediately focuses in on one vulnerability which is he says this is the training budget that's the advertising budget advertising is four hundred eighty thousand dollars training is only forty thousand dollars so it's only eight percent we are talking about the customer called in the customer wants to buy training but all buyers go through certain phases 
And he recognized while his rep was on the phone that there was a concern and that concern needed to be resolved or you could call it an objection and the objection needed to be overcome. I would say resolved though. I think Cardone said, what is, uh, what's your concern? What's stopping you from making this decision? And he said, it's a lot of money. And he said, well, it's even more money than you're thinking, but what's the real outcome that you want? And he helped walk him through the concern. Are you really concerned about getting your people trained? Are you really concerned about helping your veterans stay hungry and continue to develop their skills? Are you really interested in getting your green reps brought up to speed? Uh, why don't we call Grant Cardone right now and ask him to share his philosophy on success? That's awesome, I'm in. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are in for a treat. We are calling Grant Cardone, and we are switching over to Grant Cardone's live TV set. And here's Grant. I don't care what happens. This will be one of the best interviews you ever do in your lifetime. <laughs> it will be the best interview we have ever done. Grant, Anthony and I, we just analyzed your live call, and uh, here are three things that we discussed. Number one, you used your star power to get the customer's attention, and he responded very well. Secondly, you immediately focused on the critical issue, which was the customer's concern. Why was he interested in your program in the first place? And number three, there is a difference between the language of sales and the language of business. The language of sales is words. The language of business is numbers. And you immediately got to the numbers. What was the real problem? The four to eighty thousand dollar problem that may not always work, or the forty thousand dollar challenge that helps salespeople focus on every single call. Okay, well, let, let me just say first of all the fact that you you recognize that call for what it is. A lot of people will hear that call and critique it. I mean, I can sit here and listen to it. That was a live call, done with no preparation. Um, I basically walked into my call center and heard a salesperson mishandling a call. Actually, he was doing a very good job with the caller, but based on his skill set at that moment, which we've all had that situation, he was unable to bring it to another place. So there's two things that I think about. First is as a manager, my job at that point is not to reprimand or teach. My job is to intervene and help and be an example. You know, my, my whole career, I've been very interested for the last 25 or 30 years now in sales. I have never seen anybody actually do that like you saw. And I think that's a, as many people as you've interviewed and they talk about selling and how to sell and the, the process and the steps, seeing it is a completely, it, it's a very, very revealing moment. So, Grant, can you share your basic strategy with us? Yeah. What was your strategy? And, and here's the premise that I'm using when I'm on this phone call. Number one, I rem I'm reminded that he called us for something. Now I need to find out what it is he called for. He's telling the salesperson, call me back in 30 days. We've all heard that. Yes. The salesperson buys it. I intervene. I haven't bought that yet. And I'm operating on a couple of premises. One, people don't buy things because they love it or want it. They buy it to solve a problem. And number two, and you see me actually do both of these. Number two, people do not, uh, I don't solve people's price problems. When I hear a price objection, if anything, I'm going to make the objection bigger, not smaller. I'm not going to reduce my price to solve the problem. I'm going to give them a bigger problem to solve. And you heard me do that by saying first, hey, why did you call? And he told me why. And number two, I understand price is your objection. Well, why is that? I, man, I can't even fathom $1,200. So what I did was multiply the problem to be not 1200 but 40000 And the reason I'm doing that is because I believe he's trying to solve a problem. He's not trying to not spend money. Yeah, Craig, what I found interesting in this situation is that um it's a precarious role that you're playing as a sales leader. You want to nurture talent, but also as a business leader, you want to get the business. So it sounds like you played the role of the general that went to the front and showed there is no fear. When the village is being attacked, okay, it's not about leadership now, it's about survival. In this particular, if we look even deeper into this call, what people don't understand was this was actually a PR opportunity for me. This originated because a group in England 
called me and wanted to export from the U.S. a show, a TV show called Turnaround King, where I went to the U.K. Rather than me trying to tell them who I was, I accomplished many things, the PR, taking a sales call, and saving revenue. As the general, the leader of your company, your first task is not to lead. It is to bring revenue into your company so that it can fight the next battle and set a good example for my sales staff. So in essence, you killed three boats with one stone. Now, let's focus back on your role as the sales leader. How do you transfer skills from you to the salesperson so you create a top performer? Well, th that's a great question. What we do is we video everything here, okay? Every time I go into a situation, it's recorded, either the audio or it's videoed. Uh, you can see a lot of video that I have on YouTube. We also, as you saw before this interview, you went and looked at my Cardone University, which is thousands of videos with test. That's the way we train people today. We show them a video, we test them, and then we drill them. So we don't tell people as much today. We're having this conversation, the executive team here. Hey, quit telling people, show them a video, have them test, and then have them drill it. Drill it, deliver that exact thing that they just saw in the video. And by doing that, you can teach a three-year-old. Well, Grant, I totally agree with you. Interactive video training is the best way to clone top performance because there's a huge difference between self-perception and reality. And video is a very objective referee. Absolutely agree. And the technology is so cheap, people should be using it. Grant, thank you for sharing your insight. I salute you. You are an amazing performer, and you have that clarity of vision. And you have this wonderful book, The 10X Rule. Uh, the book is right behind me. It's behind you, and everybody should read it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gerhard. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate you. And thank you, Anthony, for helping us uh, analyze the mindset and the skill set we need to win. See you next time.